Ash? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Oh, hello, hello. Sorry about that. I don't know, something happened with my network at home. Um, so we're going to do some Q&A, guys. So sorry for the technical difficulties. Refresh your, uh, your stream, guys. Um, so we're going to do some quick live Q&A. That's the next thing we're going to focus on. Um, we have quite a few questions. If you guys have any questions, just make sure they come through. Um, first question that comes up, and I'm not sure what I cut off last, but it was uh, the question was, um, if this class is using Arnold Render, will I be able to follow along using Octane instead? So, Maxim, I'll let you answer that, and then I might chime in as well just to kind of help out if possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I use um, Octane, so I know, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, for me, uh, uh, so w when I started to develop uh, with Ash and Mache uh, this course, I suppose one of the main, you know, ideas was to create something without this, you know, str um, you know, some kind of straight linkage to some kind of software. Uh, and uh, when I describe concepts of uh, modeling of, you know, some kind of extruding things, babbling and um, playing with points. You know, this is some kind of universal concepts of computer science and 3D graphics, at, you know, in, in general. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm covering some, um, you know, uh, elements, um, how to use it in Cinema 4D, because I am using Cinema 4D <laughs> and that's why I'm showing you how to create it. <clears throat> but I started doing the same things in 3D Studio Max, then I did it in Maya, and then I just uh, switched to Cinema 4D. So these concept, uh, concepts are quite universal. And um, it's, you know, if we are talking about um, polygon modeling, uh, when we're talking about thinking in concepts, it's uh, it's even more universal, and uh, you could uh, you know even work uh, not in Photoshop. You could just um, you know draw it's um, in your sketchbook or somewhere on your uh, notebook. And uh, uh, concerning um, a renderer, I suppose uh, that we have to ask uh, Ashley. Yeah. I mean, yeah. well, I mean, for me, when I look at what you're doing, um, yeah, you can achieve the exact same thing. If you, if you, so if you're asking about the question of, can I use this if I'm using Octane? Uh, absolutely. Why wouldn't you be able to? Um, cause what you're creating, it, you're not doing like crazy caustics or doing like these crazy in depth, like Arnold only things. You're basically using simple lighting, great lighting, this directional and everything like that. But it's not that intense on the, the, from what I can see, it's not like if you don't have Arnold, you're not able to take this class. If you have Octane, I think you're already ahead of the curve because your Octane's really fast. It responds very similarly, and it works very similarly from what I can see. Octane is very different, obviously, in, in regards to the interface and stuff. But if you are interested in this and you don't want to be hindered by you know a render or not having Arnold, I think that you can achieve the same kind of things um, using Octane. And it's similar to like how I've taken Grant Warwick's classes and stuff, and he explains stuff via V-Ray, and it, it's it's it, you can apply it in different ways because it's mostly about like seeing things and understanding how things are seen. It's not about the buttons being pushed necessarily, but more about the thing, the way that things are seen. Um, so I would say I would say give it a try. And if you're not satisfied, just let us know. We'll give you a refund. You know, like that's not a big problem. I think the goal for us is to make sure that you don't get hindered by a, a software. And that you're using this to, you know, make the best thing possible. And that was one of our biggest concerns, as we know how expensive Arnold is. Um, it is a, it is a, an amazing and very serious tool, but it's not like the cheapest tool to use out there. So, um, but I think from what I've seen, absolutely, I would, I personally would have no problem recreating the, the what you're doing in Octane. So. Yeah, yeah, and actually, um, yeah, thank you uh, for all this information. And actually, I um, read that. Um, uh, Octane even better with um, 360 imagery. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and um, Diego's you know, here too in the chat too, and Diego's doing some stuff with. Uh, he's one of our students as well, and he does a lot of stuff with Octane and the 360. Yeah, well yeah, too, so. and you right, and you could set up a camera and uh, create a, a stereo effect, but there are really, really terrible way to create this stereo effect in uh, Arnold. So uh, in some point, 
<laughs> using um, Octane is uh, even better. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I suppose the main uh, idea in the end of this course, the main goal and the main idea is to get some creative power, is to get some, you know, some kind of um, ideas and how to think and how to uh, think in 3D, how to think in 2D, how to think with your references. It's more about thinking and about lighting. But I try to, you know, to not uh, to stick too much in, you know, some kind of on some technical yeah. elements but with some geeky stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which yeah. is good. That's very important. But at the same time, there's different there's different ways, and we didn't we wanted you to teach the class that you were most in, you know excited about too. The next question is, uh, can I use Moto through this course instead of Cinema 4D? Ah, uh, wow. I, I'm not sure about uh, renderings in Moto, but I think yeah, sure. Uh, you could you know you, you could use whatever you want. Uh, when you have polygon modeling tools yeah. and that's all so uh, you know uh, I can't imagine uh, a software without these um, simple polygon uh, tools for polygon modeling this is the core idea of every you know 3d software <laughs> right yeah. and uh, I think uh, you could use whatever you want if you're interested in um, mm, you know, this creative process, how to set up lighting, how to uh, think with shapes, forms, and how to, um, you know, to develop your own universe. I think you could use whatever you want. Yeah, I, I agree too. I think I've, from what I've seen from Moto, it's, it's an exceptionally good at poly modeling and poly modeling um, like hard surface stuff too. So I, I, it looks like it'd be great for this actually. And it's like really good at building things um in 3d and building like these kind of objects and shapes and stuff which i think would be fine too um okay the next question what programs will we need and what are some uh, substitute programs question mark so these are the questions that we get probably more than any other questions about the programs and i totally understand that to help you out and everybody else that's watching this is when you go to the website and you, let's say you go to any lesson, if you scroll down, and if you're a student or you're not a student, we're gonna have that information for you always on the site, so if you ever need to access it. And in this, um, in, in here, what you'll find is underneath the student gallery, as of now, this is where the design is, it'll say recommended software, and it'll have, it'll be in bold right here, and it's right above where the, the course um, listing, the lessons are. And so for this one, it's gonna be Cinema 4D, and this is the recommended softwares that Max is using, but you don't have to necessarily use this. I would say Cinema 4D, but I think that from what I've seen, you can use um, 3D Studio Max, you can use Moto, you can use any poly-based basic um, poly -based programs. So if you are comfortable with those things, you should just use those, you know? So Cinema 4D is what Max is using. Adobe Photoshop, which is awesome, and it's like incredibly affordable now, more than ever and Arnold Render or Alternative Render or any alternative render. So again, the, the key is oh. being able to have multiple different um, different ones too and being able to use different programs if needed. So um, yeah, so let's see, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's see that. So that's the question there for substitute programs. And so hopefully that Oh, 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 Ash. So. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, actually, uh, I think it would be really great to uh, mention that you could uh, download Arnold and use it without watermarks for uh, 15 days or something. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, uh, yeah you yeah. could just, uh, you know, uh, play with it Trial. and uh, create, yeah, and create the great result uh, with really big size because you know this idea of um, uh, 360 images uh, it's a really uh, you, you have to create a big one <laughs> about uh, 10,000 pixels horizontally and 5,000 pixels vertically and you could create true uh, image without upscaling or something in trial uh, with Arnold yeah awesome. it's a really great thing yeah, and that's so that's a great thing. You get a 15-day free trial with Arnold. So if you're curious and want to try it out, and this is the course you want to try it out in, 
there you go. It's, it's free for you to use for 15 days. You can try it out. A lot of people are asking also about like Cinema 4D and how expensive Cinema 4D is. There's also a Cinema 4D Lite. Um, Andrew, I'm sure, can attest to this as well. It's attached inside of um, After Effects. You can use it through After Effects if you have a Adobe CC Creative Cloud um, set, sign up as well. So you can basically use Cinema 4D Lite, which has a lot of the basic principles of what you're using, and you can use a free um, Arnold, you know, sign in for 15 days if you want to try it out. But again, I think the key is that you can use multitude of different things. And I think the way that Max has designed this class is not like, if you don't use this program, you're not going to succeed. It's mostly like the ideas, ideations and ideas and the process of making these things. Um, as an Octane user, are we going to get lost during the Arno portion, or is it going to be general knowledge being in, in, um, implemented via this render engine? I think we covered that, so hopefully that we already kind of answered that. And I think, from my standpoint, from what I've seen, is if you already understand how Arnold or Octane works and you use it properly, I like for me, I'm not an expert in Octane at one bit, but I know how to get in there and light things and move things around. It's very easy to do so. If you have a basic comprehension of another render, Cycles 4D, um, any of these things, um, the standard render inside of uh, Cinema 4D or any of these things, you can achieve, I think, great results. It's mostly about the ideas from what I can see. Um, question, how do you guys compare the importance of storytelling to actually look of things that you're designing? Wh whether it's the character in, or the environment, and by look, I mean all shapes, rhythms, and all that visual stuff. Um, so what do you think about in, in regards to storytelling? That's probably something you cover in your first lesson, right, Max? Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose that um, even light could create a good storytelling. But when we talk uh, about uh, environment design, uh, it's a, you know, a, a huge amount of uh, tools. I mean, not the technical tools. I mean, some artistic ways to um, deliver some ideas and I, I really love this you know some kind of anonymous thing which could transform your perception without you know some kind of straight message uh, with language yeah. so I, I mean even in films we could uh, we could understand uh, the feeling of you know some environment or we could you know get some idea of oh this guy is really uh, you know some kind of complicated person or something only by looking for his you know room or something and uh, <laughs> this is the real you know some kind of task to create a one environment a one image which will you know deliver and explain more than a big story in a couple of sheets right sure. it's a it's a really interesting task and yeah yeah okay i mean it's, it's something that you consider and i think think about right so and i think that's something that's important to think about for everything when you make something is thinking about why it is what it is that you're making too and kind of working with that um, another question that came in is, uh, by any chance, would you ch would you choose uh, your course be good for creating organic style structures or organic objects? Question mark. Uh, wow, um, it's really interesting. Uh, so um, I covered uh, mostly some kind of objects with, you know, some kind of straight lines. But, um, you know, because I, I developed this course as a, you know, some kind of universal thing for thinking about architecture and thinking about shapes, forms, I think this, this course is, you know, some kind of universal. But I covered mostly um, this thing. Um, um, I think uh, I shared screen, right? Can you see? Yeah, let me see. I'm back yeah. on your so, screen. Yeah, so I, I'm just, uh, I showed how to model environment where, you know, things are not so organic. But I think 
there are a huge amount of information in in my course which you know covered lighting and um, you know some kind of language of forms and other stuff and I suppose if you want to you know move into some organic things it could be you know useful as a you know some kind of um, thing which could kindle some ideas or you know some something sure yeah i mean it's uh, beauty is in the eye beholder so you will be part of like you know if this is something that you want to you know extrapolate upon and build things i think that this is i mean if you look at this to answer your question from what i see is that you're literally creating organic style structures and organic objects so i think yeah that's to answer your question take this course if that's what you want to learn that's an absolute yes um, cause it's the most bespoke to that exact, um, inquiry or desire. This is the one course we have that is actually going to hit that perfectly. Um, next question that's coming in is, is, this is a weird question. Could I use this course to do an automotive vehicle interior design concept? I'll let you answer that because I think, yeah, but yeah. So they're asking if they, if they took this uh, class, wow. if it would help them with, um, automotive vehicle interior design. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really interesting. Um, I suppose, yeah, because uh, this thing is not about, you know, concept architecture in some point. It's more about um, concept thinking and uh, concept thinking um, on environments. And sure, uh, I think um, environment of a car, it's a, it's a great place to, <laughs> to play. Actually, I had a great um, project. Um, oh, wait a second. Uh, we did it for a, a Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, I was going um, to ask you to share that because you did some stuff with the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 this is some kind of images. And, uh, you know, uh, the idea was to, um, you know, some kind of deliver this perception of futuristic environment and w without some, you know, strictly ideas that have to be some kind of door or some kind of windshields or something it's it's it, it was more uh, abstract and concept thing only for your perception yeah. so and um, i suppose uh, this thing is quite universal and uh, you could um, um, implement this knowledge in in every environment but as I said previously, it's not only about environments in some point because I, I'm I'm passionate about graphic design, about product design, product design and all this uh, jazz. And I wanted to, you know, combine all these um, visual mediums in one course, which could, you know, be some kind of universal thing at some point. Yeah, I think it's a universal thing that you're teaching, which is that's the core of it. So like. I think that there's specifics, but it's also there's there's also you know a, um, an overall arching piece of information you know that for everything. So I think for for the person that's asking that exact question, I think yeah, absolutely. The, he's showing you how he understands how to create abstract forms and actually you know create things based on design. And it's like you mentioned, it's like it's about opening up the idea of dialogue within yourself in, re in regards to design and how, how great that comes out because you can make so many different infinite amount of possibilities, which I think, I think is really great too. And then using it, imagine, so like for the car design, for example, so let's say like you have the basics of the car, but then you want to create a design that for the, for the passenger to see, sit with and you can make a three-dimensional version of sitting in that car and give that to your, um, your, your employer. And how cool is that? You know, like that, yeah, that's... Yeah. That it doesn't get better than that, really. I guess the only thing that gets better than that is like sitting in the car moving, you know, in that experience, you know. Um, next question is, topology is really a trouble for me in, in polygon modeling. Hey, I totally hear you there. That's like, I feel that, I feel your pain. Uh, will you think about <laughs> topology when you go do uh, polygon modeling? So do you think about topology when you do polygon modeling in this course? And you try to touch on that stuff or no? Ah, wow. Um, actually, topology is really <laughs> a huge pain when you're doing really, really hard um, and complex things. Yeah. I tried, you know, um, I'm trying to explain some 
kind of tricks and things which I found uh, through the years of doing polygon modeling is to, uh, you know, some kind of um, create a really, really deep hierarchy and um, uh, hide huge amount of objects and work with small, small different objects uh, with quite simple topology because um, you know sometimes you could um, you know dive too deep and start doing one shape and uh, create the huge uh, amount of different details on uh, one shape and you could became you know uh, or, or overwhelmed with amount of different details so it's it's not a good thing and uh, talking about topology yeah maybe um in this course i tried not to you know not to dive too deep uh into polygon hardcore polygon modeling yeah. if you know what i mean but your I, I, isn't I, that horrible i mean it's it's i mean it's not that bad <laughs> so i've seen way yeah. worse especially for me so and people are talking about like um you're asking about like uv mapping and all that stuff you didn't get into that stuff right yeah. No. So actually, actually, I covered it in my course. Well, there you go. So, yeah. yeah. But um, you know, guys, um, in this um, stage of concept thinking, uh, it, it could be really painful to you know to dive into <laughs> UV mapping in it. Cinema 4D. <laughs> yeah, don't do it, please. Yeah. So, and, and I'll show you guys what... on another stream. I'll show you how I use 3D coat and stuff. We're gonna have some guests on coming up pretty soon. That it yeah, will help where you with that. could so just, just use these streams to help yeah. you, you know, bridge that gap. Because, yeah, it becomes so cumbersome and such a pain in the butt. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. And uh, in this uh, course, I covered um, my favorite thing <laughs> for <Circles>. UV mapping <laughs> for circles, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, but actually, um, I, I love to use uh, small, um, you know, some geometry with um as a sprites with some kind of alpha channel hmm. to use um to use think as a texture but actually it's not a texture it's just a flat uh, flat you know square with with an image oh. and uh, it, it could be really really uh easy and useful thing to set up a really complicated scene with a small, you know, some kind of uh, stickers or some graphic elements without this huge pain of unwrapping and doing all this stuff. I love to use just, a, you know, planes with some simple textures and alpha channel. And when I use huge amount of them, uh, you can't find some kind of terrible seams or something and yeah. you could just uh, and perceive it as a one texture environment That's and smart. yeah it's it's a really t fun trick and you could save huge amount of time doing this thing are you using a tablet or a mouse and that's the last question oh yeah it's tough tablet <laughs> yeah that's a quite that's a tough question man this is um this is a long time coming. I'm stoked to have you here. We all are. The Learn Squared family is super happy to have you a part of this. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, and and <laughs> you guys check out this class. You know, it's 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 an it's an amazing class. I've been seeing what Joe's been making from it. Um, I'm posting a link for the class in the chat too. If you if you're interested and curious about the class, go to LearnSquared.com. And when you get there, if you just scroll down right to the first one, and the, we always put the newest classes up at the top. John Sweeney's was uh, came out a couple weeks ago. There's amazing work that's coming out of that. And our goal here is to bring you the best talent, you know, our friends, people that we work with, people that we're familiar with, people that we know are the best at what they do, and for them to come and share this knowledge with you. There's never been a better time, in my opinion, to ever learn how to be an artist than now, because we have access to all these amazing people who are willing to share this information and knowledge with, with us all. So. If you're interested in learning this and getting better and more understanding of how like Maxine makes his work and also seeing Joe's um, journey and seeing the rest of the student base and how they think about lighting and, and shape language and design and story and, and, and putting that together and fusing that into like an experience of a three-dimensional 3D experience, it's, it's all here. So um, there you go.
I don't know what else to say. I'm not going to hard sell something that's amazing. It's amazing. So you guys, either you want to <laughs> learn something awesome or you don't. It's pretty much your choice, you know. So, um, Max, is there anything else that you wanted to mention before we head off? Well, guys, I'm so happy to become a part of your family. I'm a huge fan of Learn Square, and, well, now I'm part of it. Yeah. Hurrah! Man. Yeah, man. <laughs> and we're finally here. We've, uh, there's Yay! been months. Uh, we did it yes man you, you, you carried a brunt of the the work obviously so thank you for being a part of it and, and that whole journey it's just been it's been incredible so um and i'm personally i can't wait one of my favorite things is to see what students do with the knowledge that is given to them and i i personally can't wait to see what you all out there make with this and go out there and evolve and make something amazing it's just going to be incredible so super excited for that if you guys have any questions you guys know you guys can always hit us up on the we're on the streams and stuff and max it would be really great if you ever want to come back and we do like a stream we just hang out and chat and be more casual rather yeah, than i would love class. Yep. so just let me know whenever you want to and we'll just do some more live streams because that's what we do them here too so yeah amazing okay guys um that's cool. it for today you guys be well be pr powerful be prolific go make amazing things and uh we'll catch you guys on on the the next stream okay Peace out, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.